Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, he goes he goes on and on about intelligence. He talks about intelligence and how important intelligence is. But in my experience, as a school teacher, uh, it's not intelligence that is the big issue. It's not intelligence that predicts how well you do in life. Um, I've got a, lo a lot of kids in my in, in my experience. They're, they're really, really intelligent. They're really, really clever. And they, they don't go on to do very well. They they fritter away their intelligence. But um, it's the kids that have the, the right personality, particularly kids that are kind. Kids kids that are kind, be kind, that are good. Uh, it's, it's those kids kids that, that, that do well in life in my experience it's those it's those kids that that go on to do well and so I would think that um your personality and particularly how kind you are is is, is as important if not more important than intelligence and uh, I think he fails to take this into account hello 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 and welcome to this edition of the jolly heretic now today I'd like to respond to an interesting criticism that I have uh, received a number of times which is that uh, actually, I am wrong to go to stress the importance of intelligence, and in reality, it's personality that counts, and particularly kindness, particularly how kind you are. And there's this idea that, well, intelligent people may be frightfully intelligent, but they're you know they're not necessarily very nice people, and it's nice people that do well in life. It's not it's it's kindness, it's being altruistic and empathetic. It's those kinds of people that do well. <clears throat> um, socioeconomically. And um, this is just not true. And I want to look at the evidence for it. Now, first of all, then, what is uh, agreeableness? Agreeableness is uh, a, a uh, one of the big five personality traits, and it's composed of altruism, which is that you are a nice person and you want to be kind to other people. You desire to be kind. You are pro-social. And it's and of empathy. And empathy is that you have the ability to read other people's minds, basically, from their facial expressions uh, and things like this, and that you kind of feel what they feel, which makes you want to be kind. Now, it's certainly true that people that are high in... Um, empathy uh, tend to have more friends at school they, they they tend to be more popular they get on better with other people uh, you know uh, they, they will uh, they will have in some ways a, a, a better a better a better social life but uh, what is just not true based on the available evidence is that uh, altruism and empathy is as and certainly not more important than intelligence in terms of socioeconomic status and achievement and that kind of thing and moreover there is considerable evidence that people who are high in intelligent, intelligence are also just higher in aspects of agreeableness. And so really, you shouldn't separate the two. Uh, intelligence, to a significant degree, simply goes together with certainly with aspects of agreeableness. It causes you to mimic agreeableness. Intelligent people, on average, <clears throat> the, the idea that, oh, the, the nasty high IQ Einstein or the nasty high IQ Newton, that's unusual. Uh, in general, people that are intelligent are just nicer. Now, I want to have a look at the evidence for this. So first of all, if we try to understand um, why why is it, the evidence for it. So first of all, there is a 0.3 correlation, this is in a study by Kaufman, if you want to Google it, between, intelli um, between IQ and the ability to solve social problems. Now, what is the ability to solve social problems? The ability to solve social problems is basically emotional intelligence. It's basically um, empathy. So there is a 0.3 correlation between intelligence and empathy. Why? Well, the idea is that if you are intelligent, you are better able to think about what another person's perspective might be. You are better able to logically, independent of whether you are on the personality level high in agreeableness, you are better able to put yourself in the place of somebody else. You are better able, you're, you're more creative, you have basically a more complex imagination, you're better able to imagine what it is like to be somebody else, to think about what it is like to be somebody else, to think about all the, the, the related variables and to act accordingly. So people who are um, high in intelligence are better able, at a relationship of about 0.3, to solve social problems i.e. they are higher in empathy. Uh, secondly, there was a study from China which found that people who are uh, high in intelligence are, they literally act in a more pro-social way. Now, okay, this is based on self-report, but this is what is indicated. They are, they are simply more pro-social. Um, they have a higher sense of moral identity, so people that are highly intelligent will perceive themselves as moral people and who are concerned with morality and are concerned about doing what is fair and right and being kind to others. They are better at perspective taking, i.e. they are better at trying to think about different people's perspectives and different people's viewpoints and what these might lead to. And, <clears throat> and they are simply higher in empathetic concern. 
i.e. they care more about other people. And I would suggest that this is probably because they are better able than someone who is of lower intelligence. They have a more complicated sense of self, essentially. They are better able to put themselves in the, in the, boot, in the boots of somebody else and think about what it might be like to be them. They are less impulsive, they are more likely to think, think carefully, and therefore to think about what it might be like to be somebody else. And this paper argues that the high uh, pro-social uh, behaviour of people that have high intelligence is mediated by, is caused by, uh, their high levels of empathetic concern and their high levels of perspective taking, and that these two things are um, a direct reflection of intelligence, that people that are more intelligent are going to be more um, empathetic because they're better able to put themselves in someone else's position, and they're going to be better able to see lots of different perspectives, because seeing lots of different perspectives, including the perspectives of other people um, helps you to solve problems and helping to and, and solving problems is obviously the essence of intelligence. If you look at in, in terms of groups, if you break up groups according to their intelligence, then what you find is that more intelligent people tend to be, uh, Hainer Rinderman has done research on this, they tend to be much more in favour of uh, values that relate essentially to cooperation. Uh, and and the a, a big component to cooperation is obviously going to be altruism, uh, is going to be uh, uh, empathy and and taking other people into account. So they tend intelligent people tend to have these what you might call burger values, these pro social values, where they are in they are they are interested in creating a complex civic society in which everyone cooperates and and, and that sort of thing. Um, and this is why intelligence is associated with things like voting. It's associated with signing petitions. It's associated with going on protests. It's associated with any kind of civic involvement. With with, you know, social organisations, your local history society, your local uh, this, that and the other. Um, and it's associated with support for democracy. And a, a big part of democracy is that you are prepared to cooperate with other people, that you are prepared to, to have empathy for their viewpoint and think about what concerns them. You don't just, you don't just uh, drive a snowplough through their ideas and just say, I'm going to dominate and I'm going to be in charge and screw you. You are concerned about everybody getting on. We're seeing this in Finland at the moment. It's rather beautiful in a way, uh, although perhaps it's declining, uh, but the, the, compared to the UK, we're having these prime ministerial debates, these power minister detenti, prime ministerial exams, where you have all of the, ca the leaders of, of, the, of the parties that are in parliament, and they nicely have a little discussion, and if they want to say something, they put their hand up, and you have the prime minister, Salam in there, putting her hand up, while the, the leader of Kokum, the, the Conservative Party, is, is, is talking and so on, and they nicely exchange ideas. And this assumes, of course, that this, this cooperation, this idea that everyone should be taken into account, it assumes, a, it, it, is, assumes it, it is reflective of a high level of empathy. Uh, the next issue is that people that are high in intelligence are also high in trust. And trust, of course, means if you trust people, then you are better able to be kind to them uh, because you will be sure that the kindness will be reciprocated. Uh, that is the essence of trust. So trust implies that you are kind and that you see other people as kind. It implies empathy. Why are they higher in trust? Well, I suppose if you are low in intelligence, then you are more likely to be conned. You, are, you will be less able, to, you, probably due to your lower empathy, you will be less able to think about what it's like to be somebody else. You will be less able to think about all the possibilities and all the perspectives. You will be less able to work out logically what the reality is of the situation. And so you'll be more likely to be conned. So the best thing to do is to trust nobody. That if you are high in intelligence, um, then then you, well you won't that that's not going to happen, and so it becomes a you, you're not going to be conned. So you, it becomes adaptive to trust people, and of course if you do trust people, then you're better able to create larger coalitions. You're better able to cooperate. You're better able to create a more complex society, um, and and you're better able to work together and so forth. And so therefore trust is important, and that is why as Tatu Van Den has, has argued, uh, trust levels are um, are central to democracy and to the maintenance of democracy. Democracy is based around trust. You trust that. The the other side is not going to come in and destroy you, uh, not going to come in and put you in prison. Um, so therefore, democracy assumes this this uh, certain level of uh, of trust. Um, and then finally, it could well, it could be argued that um, that the altruism of high IQ it's, it's a kind of what well, relates to this actually. It's a kind of costly signal. So if you engage in altruistic behaviour, then uh, it it has a cost to you 
but it, it doesn't matter because you if you're wealthy if you have resources and and and, and that sort of thing then um it, you know, you're you're kind of saying uh, oh it doesn't matter i i can engage i can afford to be highly altruistic because of all the resources that i have so you are signaling in a sense by being highly altruistic your own socio high socioeconomic status and in that sense you are signaling your intelligence because the correlation between socioeconomic status and uh, <clears throat> and um intelligence is about 0.5 overall so what this means is essentially you're signaling your high iq so it could be argued that highly altruistic behavior is a way of signaling literally of signaling high iq whereas a person that has lower iq is not going to dare to engage in such a social signal because um, that person will not have the resources necessary to be able to afford to engage in that kind of social signal so it's a it's a kind of costly signaling um and finally it, it's one of the, the the other thing which is, is associated with um uh, with, uh, with 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 uh, in, uh, intelligence's education level and other aspects of socioeconomic status, um, and these are stronger, are much stronger than is the case with personality, and that is why I want, I want to move into the the, ne the next issue. So it's, we're quite clear that intelligence is associated with agreeableness. Intelligence is associated with empathy. People that are intelligent. Are, are more likely to be pro-social. So our hypothetical teacher's argument is wrong in that sense. Now the next argument is, oh well, let's put intelligence aside. Um, agreeableness, uh, uh, the kind of personality you have, is more important in terms of how well you will do in life than intelligence. And that's simply not true. So the correlation between socioeconomic status and intelligence is about 0.5. The correlation between um, your agreeableness and your socioeconomic status is very weak it's about 0.1 in some studies and in other studies there's just no correlation at all there is a correlation between the general factor of personality as it's known and socioeconomic status and this is the idea that um uh, in the same way that you can get intelligence and you have this pyramid of intelligence and the base is the is the specialized abilities like you know the ability to drive a car or do up your laces or catch a ball or something and then above that you have spatial you have verbal you have mathematical intelligence and above that you have g now in the same way it's been argued that, that we can talk about a general factor of personality which divides essentially between are you socially effective or are you not socially effective and what this general factor of personality does is it takes the pro-social or the socially effective aspects, i.e. things from the base of the pyramid, um, of each of the big five personality traits to create a G factor. So it's not quite so. So in terms of as people who are um, successful will be higher in GFP in the sense that they will be higher in aspects of agreeableness, aspects of low neuroticism, aspects of high conscientiousness, aspects of uh, high openness and aspects of extroversion. They're not necessarily in the uh, <clears throat> in the big five themselves, although there are associations. I mean, there are conscientious people uh, will tend to have higher socioeconomic status than people that are less conscientious. Uh, uh, neurotic people will tend to have lower socioeconomic status than people that are high in neuroticism. Though there are nuances to that because, uh, because a certain level of anxiety seems to be associated with doing well in the education system and so on. Um, but in, but in, even so, uh, in, in general, the, the personality trait that is the driver of um, socioeconomic success is not agreeableness, it's conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is impulse control. That's what conscientiousness is, is the ability to follow the rules, control your impulses. Now that correlates with educational attainment across the lifespan at 0.55. Whereas with um, uh, with uh, education in general, education correlates um, uh, with intelligence at about uh, 0.5. So it's perhaps slightly more. I don't know if that attains significance, but it's, it's, it's at least the same. So conscientious people do very well in the education system and conscientiousness may well drive doing well uh, socioeconomically. But this is there is no reason. I mean, the, the 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 relationship with agreeableness is much weaker. There is a relationship between agreeableness and doing well in education, but it's something like point two. Certainly intelligence predicts it to a much greater extent. Intelligence predicts doing well socioeconomically and doing well in the education system to a much greater extent than does agreeableness. So I just thought I would um, refute that uh, common argument that I am receiving. Yes, it's important to be nice. Yes, we all like nice people. Yes, we want to live in a society where we're cooperative and people are nice and kind and thoughtful and empathetic. Uh, but it is simply inaccurate to say that 
agreeableness is uh, and being kind is just as important, if not more important, than intelligence in terms of the achievement of socioeconomic status, in terms of how well you do at school, in in, in terms of this, that, and the other. It's I'm, I'm afraid it's simply not true. It's intelligence which is the most important thing. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!